TWC has advice for your business about interviewing applicants, pre-employment tests, and deciding the best candidate for your available positions. My name is Nina, and I'm about to get in your business. If you would like to know more about the topics listed below, click that subscribe button. Smash that notification bell. I upload new videos on Thursdays. On the Texas Workforce Commission's website, there is all kinds of useful information. In my new series, Reading the TWC Website, I troll the website of the Texas Workforce Commission, grab interesting information, and read it to you. Here is some information from the TWC website about interviewing applicants, pre-employment screening, and deciding the best candidate for your available position. Even though this is information found on the Texas Workforce Commission's website, it's good information for any business, no matter where your company resides. When interviewing applicants, apply the same standard that is applied to job applicants. Ask only about things that are directly related to the job requirements for the position under consideration. Watch out for tape recording. The applicant might be tape recording the interview without an employer's knowledge, and a video or tape recording of an interview would be discoverable in a discrimination claim or lawsuit. Tell the managers who conduct the interviews to be extremely careful about note-taking during interviews. Anything like that can be discoverable in a claim or lawsuit. Many discrimination cases have been lost due to careless and or embarrassing comments written by interviewers. Test for whether something should be written down. Would you feel comfortable explaining it in front of a judge or a jury? Working interviews are not the same as pre-hire interviews at which an interviewee might demonstrate how he or she would carry out a sample task. An interview during which the worker performs actual work and receives what most companies would call on-the-job training or orientation to the company is work time. A company must pay at least the minimum wage for such training time, satisfy all of the usual new hire paperwork requirements, W-4, I-9, new hire reports, and so on, and report the wages to the TWC and the IRS. Pre-employment tests or examinations must be job-related and non-discriminatory, i.e. required of all applicants in that job category. Job-related skill tests are permissible if administered consistently and are the best way to confirm whether an applicant's claim of expertise in a certain type of work are true, untrue, or perhaps merely a bit inflated. Be careful with inflated or unrealistic self-assessments by applicants. It is common to overestimate one's own skill. That does not prove misconduct or dishonesty, but it does demonstrate the need for employers to verify claims of a particular level of skill. The ADA prohibits medical inquiries prior to making a tentative offer of employment. Of course, the ADA applies only if a company has at least 15 employees. To be sure, consult legal counsel. If medical inquiries are made following a tentative offer of employment, the same inquiries must be made of all applicants for such a position, not just the ones who look like they may have medical problems. Medical inquiries should relate directly to the essential functions of the job. The essential functions are the main reason for the job to exist and should be consistent with the job description for that position. Requests made lawfully under the ADA for medical information must include the following genetic information notice as per EEOC regulations pertaining to the Genetic Information Non-Discrimination Act, or GINA. The ADA requires employers to maintain any and all medical information in a separate and confidential medical records file. The employer must be prepared to offer reasonable accommodation to any otherwise qualified applicant who turns out to have a protected disability. 
A reasonable accommodation is a change in procedure, a device, a change in duties, a shifting of personnel, or a change in the work environment that the employer could make without undue hardship to its business and which would enable the applicant to perform the essential functions of the job. Undue hardships can vary according to the size of the company and the nature of the proposed accommodation. Drug tests are not included within the definition of medical examinations under the ADA and may be given at any time. Of course, confidentiality rules apply. No one should ever learn of the test results except people with a legitimate need to know. If a drug test somehow reveals a disability, ADA issues will arise. Physical agility tests, often used by police and fire departments when screening applicants, are not considered medical exams under the ADA and may be given at any point in the hiring process but they must be administered to all applicants in that category. And if they tend to screen out individuals with disabilities, the employer must be able to demonstrate that the tests are job related and consistent with business necessity and further, that no reasonable accommodation is possible that would enable people with certain disabilities to meet the requirements of the test. Notwithstanding discrimination laws, employers may always hire the best qualified candidate for the job. The important thing is to be able to explain how the one who was hired really had the best qualifications and was the best fit for the position in terms of legitimate job-related factors. That, of course, requires a very close and careful look at the job application and other information about applicants and a meticulous consideration of all factors that are relevant to the job, such as minimum qualifications, prior experience, availability, and work ethic. A hiring standard that results in exclusion of an applicant on the basis of race, color, religion, age, gender, national origin, disability, or genetic information is suspect and presents a risk of an EEOC complaint or lawsuit unless there's a bona fide occupational qualification dictating that one type of person be favored over the other types of people for a position, thus leave minority status out of the hiring decision to the greatest extent possible. The burden of proving that a BFOQ exists is on the employer. In general, employers do not have to explain why they are not hiring a particular applicant with an exception. Applicants turned down due to an adverse background or credit check covered by the Fair Credit Reporting Act. It is usually best to restrict any explanations to short and factual non-inflammatory statements such as, you seem to have some good qualifications, however, the one we hired better fit the requirements we had at this time. Please check back with us about any openings we might have in the future. Thank you. Try to avoid ever using the term overqualified to explain why a person is not suitable for hire. The EEOC and the TWC Civil Rights Division consider that to be potential evidence of age discrimination. If you would like more information on anything I've read to you, please visit the TWC website. Thanks for watching.